Hi everybody, welcome to another YouTube video. We are in the beautiful West Kirby, trying to dodge the rain. <laughs> Just started raining now. But you can see behind me here, we've got solar panels. We're gonna take you through the battery storage system, what the future plans of this system are as well, because we're looking at what new equipment may be coming out in the near future. And yeah, taking you through the system as ever. So if you like the video, like it, comment, share, and obviously subscribe as well if you get the chance. But yeah, let's get into it. So we might as well start on the roof. We're up here already, so let's have a look at where we've got to and what it's gonna be like when it's finished. So you can see here, we've got majority of the panels on. I think there's 12, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's 12 panels on here already. We've got 20 of these going on. So these are Longy all black 410 watt panels. These are on two rows of 10, uh, nice and simple. But you'll notice with this roof, we've actually installed them quite high up. One reason is we've got this vent. So this vent is sticking through here for the soil stack. So we could have dropped this down a little bit further and sort of molded the panels around it, but it just overcomplicates it. So what we've done is we've lifted the panels up and put them in the middle of the gap between this section and the ridge. That also helps because just behind me here, we've got a few trees, but they're not at tall. So the higher up that roof we get, the less of a shading impact they'll have on these panels. So all those sort of considerations have gone into why we've installed them high up as we have. Um, you'll also notice that up at this top section up here, there is some rail missing. And that may or may not be because I miscalculated how much rail I need and Dean has now gone to get two more lengths from Ollie who is 50 minutes away. So yeah, we're not perfect. But that's, <laughs> that's where we've got to at the minute. We've got 12 panels on and as soon as Dean gets back with that rail, we'll be able to get those, those other panels on the roof and get this all up and running. You'll also see just behind me here, we've got some mesh bird protection. So we've just sort of thrown this in here at the minute, just whilst we, uh, we work down the side. We'll have a little walk over there and we'll have a look. See along this far side here, Dean has started to get the, the clamps in, so we've just got to cut. We've just got to cut these, these little threaded bars back off as soon as we're happy. But yeah, so we're working on that and get as much of that on as possible until Dean gets back with the extra rail. You'll also notice we've got some of these tiles up. So usually when you're working on a system, you can at least get to the bottom rail fairly easily by just stepping off the scaffold and onto it. Like I mentioned, we're, we're quite high up on the roof on this job. So we've, we've created some footholds, almost like a, a ladder. <laughs> so we step off the scaffold into this, and then from that, we're able to then get onto the, onto the bottom rail. So that's what these are, but these are slid up. So all we have to do when we finish, lift that, drop them down and the back in. So yeah, a little homemade ladder, if you like. So the cables from this system go through underneath the tile, through some protective conduit, and then into a DC junction box, which we'll have a look at. That then goes from there down into the garage where we'll go next, and we'll have a little look at the inverter, the battery, the mod bus, and we'll chat a little bit about how this system may change over the next few years. So yeah, let's go downstairs and have a look at that. Oh, before we go down, how could I forget about the solar edge element of this? People that have watched my videos know we pretty much fit solar edge on every project and every property that we, we work on. So you can see here, we've got the solar edge optimizers that are exposed, obviously waiting for those panels to cover them. You'll notice that we've uh, taped up the open plugs. That's just because it's a little bit damp here and we don't want any dampness getting into those plugs. So underneath every single one of these panels, we've got one of these solar edge optimizers. And I'll quickly go through what they do again, if this is your first video that you've watched of ours. Those optimizers effectively make each panel work independently. There are thereabouts. There's a difference between these and micro uh, inverters. So systems like Enphase actually have the inverter underneath each panel. These are more optimizers. So they still work from DC from the panels to DC back to the inverter. Whereas things like Enphase, they actually have AC coming onto the roof. I prefer the DC side of things, but each to their own. So each one of these panels has one of these little optimizers underneath it. And that means that if this bottom row or, or a section of this bottom row gets shaded from something like those trees there, then 
it will mean that the, the efficiency of those will drop because they've been shaded. We can't change that unless we cut the trees down, but we can't change the shading effect. All we can do is we can stop that shading effect affecting all the other panels that are connected to it. If this was a standard system and we had some panels shaded, that would lower the output of that full string of panels. Whereas with the Solar Edge system, if we have a shading problem, it will only lower the output of those affected panels. It also means that this system's addressable. If say the panel that's gonna go on top of that optimizer becomes faulty, then on the monitoring, we can see that that system is underperforming. We can check voltages, we can check currents, we can check all sorts of things. And that means that instead of hiring this massive scaffold again, we could set a tower scaffold up here to safely access and pinpoint exactly where that problem is. So it can't necessarily solve every problem, but it, it solves maybe 80 to 90% of the problems that you could face with a system. So for me, that's again why we fit Solar Edge on every property that we can. So now let's really head down to the garage and have a look at the, uh, the stuff that we've installed in there. So before we get into all of this beautifully looking installation in this garage, I'm gonna just address a couple of things. So a lot of our videos, we get comments and everything about the cost of the system, what we've installed and how long it takes us to install that equipment. So we're gonna address that now. Uh, and we may look to put this in, in our future videos as well. So here is what we've installed. Here is how much it's cost. And here is how long it's taken us to install it. So there's some information for you. If you're interested in a system like this, so here's that information, open and honest. We pride ourselves of being open and honest. So for future videos, we'll, we'll be looking at implementing this as long as the customer's happy for that to be revealed. So you can see here, this is where all of our equipment has been installed. It's a perfect place really, it's dry. It's in a garage with a cavity, so the, the temperature is kind of insulated. We've got our own little distribution board over here. So this has within it, as our main switch, because we split the tails of the meter box. We've got our surge protection on the AC side. We've got an MCB for that surge protection and we've got an MCB for the solar PV system. So with this, this is a five kilowatt solar edge inverter. However, we've wired it ready for an eight kilowatt. We've also put a larger AC isolator in, in preparation for the customer possibly changing the system and having an eight kilowatt system in the future. I'll go into that in a little bit more detail in, in a little while. So we've got from this distribution mode, we've got the AC isolator. We've then got our generation meter, then comes out that generation meter into the inverter. So the inverter is kind of the brain of the system. That is where the magic happens, where the DC current coming from the roof changes to AC current, and then that's pushed back into the home. And that's, that's basically how the energy that the solar is produced is fed into your home. It's fairly simple, really. We've then got, on the DC side, we've got this two core four mil armored cable that you can see snakes its way all the way around and then it goes up through an airing cupboard and into the loft, which we'll have a look in the loft how we've installed that in a, in a little while. That comes into our DC isolator, which is just around this little corner here. So that's our DC isolator. So that there will isolate the panels from the inverter if we want to change the inverter, if we just want to reset the inverter, whatever we want to do, then we can, we can turn that on and off. It's off at the minute because obviously we're still installing the system. Now, something that you probably haven't seen yet uh, in any of our installations, and it's since the regulations changed, is we've got some DC surge protection as well. So in the latest edition of the regs, they tightened up a lot of the surge protection rules and made them a lot clearer. So you can see here, we've got some DC surge protection. So Solar Edge works at about 450 volts on the string. So this is a 600 volt surge protection device. So that's, that means that effectively that, that device will work with any system under 600 volts. There's a couple of other technical parts in that, maybe go to, into that a little bit more detail in a future video. So that comes into there. Uh, it comes from there into our surge protection device, out that surge protection device and into our inverter. The other part of the system is obviously this baby. <laughs> so you can see we've got the cover off it at the minute, but this is a solar edge battery. So the solar edge battery comes as this lump so you, you can't build it up like other systems. That is effectively the size of, of the system. We've got 9.7 kilowatt hours of usable capacity in that system. So it's a 10 kilowatt hour battery, but it needs to keep that 0.3 within it just to keep itself healthy. So it's 9.7 kilowatt hours of usable capacity. That is connected on the DC side. So we've got some DC leads, six mil PV DC cable coming up into this trunking and then into our solar edge inverter. Then the inverter decides whether or not it wants to let the solar power coming directly from the roof go directly into the battery, or if it needs that 
power to go through the inverter and into the home because the home needs the power. So the inverter kind of directs that, that energy around the home and into whatever piece of equipment that needs to be, needs to be fed. We've then got our solar edge mod bus which is over here so that there monitors the import the export and basically what's happening in the system and that takes all the measurements and puts that onto the online dashboard so it's in our clear lid box so we can see the status lights we've got our um, switch fuse spur here just to fuse this down to three amps so you can see that's all neatly clipped in there and it's supplying that device there's a, then a CT clamp that goes on the main incoming supply, which is where this gets all of its information from. And then a data cable, which is one of these here, which comes up and into the system to give all that data to the, to the inverter. The inverter is then online via a Wi-Fi dongle. That Wi-Fi dongle connects the system online and uh, puts all that data onto the app uh, and the dashboard. And that's kind of it in a nutshell, really. Uh, we've got all that equipment on our 12 mil Hardybacker fireboards. Again, not that it needs it because it's on a concrete block wall, so it's not flammable material if like, like it was wood or something like that. But we always do it because it just makes system look a lot nicer it's easier to fix things to it's a flat surface and yeah it just makes it look looks a lot better now we get a lot of questions about those as well the only thing we haven't fit yet is our document holder so we're going to fit that just up on here uh, and that in there is where we'll put our start stop procedure our schematic drawing manual for the system and the customer can then put any uh, any other bits of information they want in there relating to the solar just keeps it all in one place that is the downstairs part uh, like i said we're still working on this at the minute you've caught us mid install so none of this is turned on yet or commissioned but we've got quite a lot of the way so we're here today and tomorrow and then after that it will all be up and running uh, what we'll have a look at now is we'll go up into the loft and I'll show you this DC junction box and yeah show you how we've terminated it what we've used and uh, you can see what you might expect if you were to get an install from us so we're in the loft as you can see and this is our DC junction box so you can see here we've got our four mil solar PV singles cables coming in through a stuffing gland uh, and into our box with a clear lid so we can have a look at the connections without taking it off if the customer wants to have a look they don't have to take the lid off or anything like that so it's all nice and safe but you can have a look to make sure everything's okay which is always the best when it's uh, dc we've then got our four mil uh, swa cable so that's going from here all the way down sorry in the garage going into that uh, dc isolator so that's all clipped all the way around we've got our dc labels all the way down as well meaning that uh, everyone knows that when they're looking at that cable that it's a dc cable and not an ac cable so that's uh, that's quite an important piece inside this box it's something new again that we're doing so we've got the surge protection which is new but also we've adapted how we do these jun junction boxes we're using now a, a din rail connector it's a wago push fit din rail connector and it's rated 800 volts dc which is uh, which is more than the 450 volt string voltage so we're all good on that it can take a 16 mil cable which also means it can take the 4 mil pv cable with a ferrule on it so if you're a customer watching it means it's a good connector if an electrician's watching you'll know exactly what i mean <laughs> so uh, that's all here all labeled up as a dc junction box so people know what it is and our cable it's you probably won't be able to see it but uh, our cable comes through a fold in the felt a bit like say this one here and we've got a piece of oval conduit that comes through which sleeves the cable uh, to make sure that the tile doesn't rub on it um, it's protected and everything else so it's nice and secure comes through clipped and then in, into that dc junction box so that's the best way that we found to get the dc down using this swa cable it means it's nice and solid we don't actually use the armorings we don't earth the armorings or anything like that they are capped off uh, effectively through some heat shrink or some um, tape or whatever to, to cap them off nice and neatly. Uh, so that means we can take our armoured cable in using um, just using a stuffing gland because we're just using that armoured cable as a reinforced cable. We're not looking to earth the armourings because there's no automatic disconnection of the supply. The way that DC works is that the cable is oversized to what it needs to be if there's a short circuit which this is meaning that if there's a short circuit the cable can handle that whereas on an ac system you've got that disconnection of supply um, to make sure that you don't have those periods where you've got double or triple the current or whatever so all good <laughs> we've got the dc cable in that's all nice and so we're just waiting for the rest of the panels to go on and then this can all be livened up and uh, yeah get it all up and running
So I mentioned earlier on that uh, there were some future plans for this installation. So one of those future plans is the customer may be up grading and upsizing this inverter to eight kilowatt. So we've got 20 410 watt longy panels on the roof. So that's 8.2 kilowatts of energy that are all on one face. So there is actually the potential of being able to send just over eight kilowatts down to this if the, if the conditions are perfect. So we fitted a five kilowatt inverter at the minute. That is because uh, that's what we've got DNO permission for. And so if you wanna go bigger, there's probably gonna be some other DNO costs, but the other reason is that Solar Edge in the not too distant future, next year at some point, are bringing out a whole home backup system so that this system can take you um, off grid or can protect you if there is a power cut and run your full home on it. So we're waiting on the exact way that's gonna work, but it looks a little bit like the Tesla system, but obviously we can then, you can still have all the optimization uh, and what have you through the inverter, which I suppose you still can with the Tesla system, but it's all in one app and yeah, it's nice and clean. So that will involve a different inverter. So rather than get an eight kilowatt HD wave inverter now, and then have to change that eight kilowatt inverter for an eight kilowatt, I think they call it the home hub inverter, we'll just change that inverter at a later date for the eight kilowatt home hub inverter. Cause this one's obviously cheaper, the five kilowatts cheaper than the eight kilowatt standard inverter. So that's why we've done that. And that's why we've wired for a bigger supply to the isolator and from the, the distribution board. In reality, it's not very far, but you can imagine if, if you're looking at an installation and you may want to go down the same route and it's 25, 30 meters of cable to factor that in in the future. So that's one thing uh, that's going to change possibly in the future. The other thing is that the customer is waiting on a hot water diverter. So we're going for, or the, or the I think they call it the energy diverter, <laughs> um, but uh, basically where we can send surplus solar power into the immersion heater. Uh, so we've got we've got a load of them on order from Solar Edge, and so that's going to go up in the cupboard where the cylinder is, uh, or down here. We're not too sure yet. We'll have a chat when we've actually got it. We can show the customer how big it is and, and where he maybe wants it. It may it may well go in here somewhere. So that's another thing that was going to be added to the system. The other part is the customer may decide to take his hypervolt charger off and change it for the Solar Edge charger. Now, there is a bit of a problem when you look at third, third party equipment like the Hypervolt charger, like the Zappi, like, you know, Project TV or whoever else integrating with DC couple batteries. That's mainly because we can't monitor what the battery is doing. We can only monitor what the inverter is kicking out. So we don't know if that's solar power or battery power or, or what. So having the solar edge charger is, uh, is good if you've got this kind of setup because it's all in one app and it can this battery can directly talk to the charger. So that, that works a little bit better. My energy are also bringing out their uh, battery um, very soon. So then that'll be effectively the same kind of thing with their charger as well. So there's uh, there's a lot of new products coming out. So it's, uh, yeah, it's good to see. But as far as this installation goes, we've, um, we've also put this system on the floor stand. So we can just see down here, we've got uh, the floor stand here. So that means that we can then bolt another floor stand onto this, which would effectively go straight in front. And then we can sit another battery directly in front of this one. So if when this customer decides they may, they may or may not want to go for backup system, then we've got an easy installation of a second floor stand, an easy installation of another battery to then back up that system. Because we may decide, for example, he might want to keep one of these constantly full to, um, to just work on backup mode and that can be changed. So he may decide that in the summertime when it's less likely to be bad weather and what have you, he keeps a 10% reserve, 20% reserve for if there's a backup. Uh, or he may decide in winter time that he wants to keep 50% because they're constantly having blackouts. You know, it might be a storm forecast. So you can change that or you will be able to change that in the app, I'm sure, when it's all released. So we're kind of thinking ahead as to what is gonna be happening with this system over the next five years. And we've kind of put put things in place to uh, to help us with that but um but that's pretty much everything on this install we're going to crack on and get the rest of it done get the rest of those panels on get the rest of that rail on and bird protection everything get this powered and get it commissioned and get it working so that is what we're on with and uh, yeah we'll show you how we get on so dean has returned and saved us brought a couple of extra lengths of rail so i thought i'd just show you how we're going to extend this rail so i've put one full length back up on the roof 
but we've got a coupler and we've got a 1.2 meter bit that just gets us to the end of our installation. So we always cut these long. I'd rather cut some off at the end than be, you know, 20 more short. So this is about uh, probably 100, 200 mil long, but it just gives us that bit of security. So what will happen is when I get up onto the, onto the roof, we've got this coupler, as you can see here, it's got these, what we call torpedo bolts, and there's four of them. So two, we're gonna go into each length of rail. So you can see along here, we've got a groove. So that is gonna, that is gonna go into this, if I can do it, one, there we go. So you can see there we've got, see there now we've got two bolts into this length of rail, then these two here are gonna go into the length of rail that's already installed. So yeah, I'm gonna tighten this up now and then I can go up onto the roof and get that all fixed in place and ready for the optimizers. Obviously I'm on the roof now and I've got this length of rail here that's already secured. I'm gonna firstly tighten these two bits here into that rail. So that's, that coupler is now solid. And then it can be a little bit fiddly. These other two are gonna go into this other rail. I can do it under pressure. There we go. Says, there we are. It's in place there. So tightened up. So that's now joined. And then I can fix my rail to my to my hook, but it just works exactly the same with a with like a torpedo bolt. So I can fix that on. That's now secure. So now I'm going to just level level these two rails, which are still loose up to the point we got to, um, so that all these rail are at the same height all the way along, so we don't get sort of a step in the panels. So yeah, and then once we've done that, we can get the optimizers on this this top part, join it all together, and then get some panels on. So yeah, and hopefully all before the rain uh, rain comes back. I've got that other piece on now. So the next thing is. Um, this bottom rail and that top rail is a fixed height that we've set it to. So now we're, we're wanting to alter the height of these middle rails. As you can see on these other panels, that's where they, they join together. If this one here is say higher than this one, then you get a step in the panels. So we're throwing a full length of rail up to make sure that the rail hits the bottom of this rail on, on each of these two horizontal rails so that we know that they are the same same height and they're in line with, with the bottom and the top rail. So I'm having a look at this now. These initial ones look pretty good. So then we can tighten the pan up. Make sure it's uh, spun into the right position. Still looking good. See? Then we can do the same on this one because that's looking pretty good. And that's it. So then we're just working our way along. So I'll go to the next line of hooks. You can see here. There we go. So it's important not to give weight on any of the rails because you might, you know, be pushing one down so and distort it. So I'm off the rails now. So this rail here is actually it's actually a little bit low, so I can then tweak that one up to meet it. Start with this one, which uh, is looking pretty good. Yeah, so that one, I'm just going to get that into the right position and then just put a little bit of pressure on it to lift it up. In. and then all them will run, will run through, do the last two, and then we're ready to get the optimizers on and panels on, but yeah, it's starting bloody raining now, so see how bad it gets. See, we've got the optimizers on now, so we've got the rail on, optimizers on, and they're spaced out roughly to be sort of in the middle of each panel, so I'm gonna cable tie 
this slack just up off the roof so it didn't flapping around. So that'll just clear the tide to the underside of the rail to keep everything neat really. And you can see on these ones here, we've done it uh, on this bottom set. So yeah, these are all in. We've got, we've mapped where these are on the Solar Edge app as well. So that's already published to the server now. So the customer will be able to see on his app, these panels in position now. So obviously when we get them plugged in, they'll let me data coming through to those points. So yeah, looking pretty good. Last ones to go on, then we can get the panels on. Um, and started generating which is exciting so there we go we have got all 20 panels on we've dodged the rain we've dodged the wind uh, and we've got them all on which is uh, which is great we've also dodged the fact that i miscounted the rail onto the van um, which does happen now and again um, but you can see we've got these longy 410 watt all blacks on the roof now like i mentioned right at the start nice and high there for the shading i'm going to work now uh, for a few more hours just to get this bird protection round but uh, you can see there we've got the start of it with this mesh running all the way around the sides. So yeah, it's looking really good and we, we're going to leave this video here. Um, check out our social media. So there'll be videos about this on TikTok, on Instagram, on Facebook, across everything. <laughs> so if you want to see how this project looks all finished and all done, then head over to any of those social media platforms and there'll probably be multiple posts and videos and things like that where you can see how it looked. So thanks so much for watching please like, subscribe. It really helps us grow um, and helps us find even more time to film content. And yeah, any questions, leave them in the comments and I will endeavor to get back to them as soon as I can. But we are busy up on roofs, so we can't always be uh, there straight away. Thanks very much and I hope you enjoyed the video.